Hello everyone, it is week 21 of our CSA shares. It is an A week. So we have 24 total weeks of our CSA shares. Um, so after this week is over, we still have three additional weeks. So make sure that you are still picking up your produce. If you are an A week, you still have one more additional week. If you're a B week, you still have two more additional weeks. Couple of quick announcements. Um, there will be some more information for next season's shares starting Friday. The um, cart will open to renew your shares next Friday, but stay tuned for details from the farm beginning this Friday for what um, that will look like. And then this week during pickup, so today between one and six and then um, again on Thursday between one and six is a garlic social. So today at pickup, Tom was out um, in the pickup area. If anyone had extra time, they could sit down and help our farmers um, break up the garlic cloves so that they can easily plant them. Um, so thank you to all that helped today. And then if you are picking up on Thursday, that will also be taking place and you can help our farmers, even if it's just for five minutes or if you wanna stay for um, one, two, three hours, that's up to you. But any help is better than no help at all. All right, so we will jump right into this week's share. We have a couple of new items and then um, some items that we've seen before in our shares. So we'll go through all of them. We'll start with our beefsteak tomatoes. This is likely the last week of our beef steaks. The beefsteak tomatoes stay on the counter. Um, they are great for slicing and using on sandwiches, slicing up and making like creasy salad. Um, just, I like to slice them and um, sprinkle some sea salt on them just as a snack. Um, great on burgers, great chopped up in on tacos. Um, you can throw these together and make a soup. You can make salsas. Um, last week I threw all of mine just into a, a quick homemade sauce that was delicious my entire I just winged it and threw it all in um, I did some some garlic and onion in the pan with um, some oil sauteed that and then chopped up all my tomatoes and just simmered it all day long um, with the skins and and all and then I just pureed it or chopped it up um, and it came out really good so that's an idea if you want a quick and easy meal. There's also a roasted tomato sauce on the blog. Um, there's tomato soups on the blog, so easy ways to use our tomatoes, but on the counter for these guys. We have peppers, so we have our bell peppers. These get stored in the crisper drawer. Um, you can put them in a bag or you can just throw them in the crisp, crisper drawer. These can be eaten raw or they can be um, cooked they can be grilled if you're still grilling. So you can do, put them on like shish kebabs and things like that or do um, just a, a grilled bell pepper. They're really good on a sheet pan roasted. So with onions um, in your oven. We prefer them raw. So I just kind of chop these up and throw them into a salad or throw them um, on the table after the kids get home from school and they, they um, eat these typically raw but they're good in salads, they're good in stir fries, they're good in like sausage and peppers. Um, if you're not going to use them or you still have a lot of peppers left from last week, we had sweet peppers last week, then chop them up and freeze them and save them for um, like chilies or, or um, soups for this winter. So those are our bell peppers. We also got four hot peppers. So you got your choice of four hot peppers, lots of different varieties. We're using hot peppers to add heat or spiciness to a dish. So um, good for salsas, good for chilies. Um, we can pickle most of our hot peppers. The membranes and seeds on the insides of the peppers contain quite a bit of heat. So if you want less spiciness, um, slice them open, remove the seeds, remove the membranes, and you'll have less heat in terms of spiciness in your dish. So those get stored just like our other peppers in the fridge in the crisper drawer. Um, most of our hot peppers are really awesome 
frozen. So we've been getting four every week for quite a while. If you have a lot of them and you're not sure what to do with them, chop them up, freeze them, um, and save them for dishes for, for spicier soups or um, chilies and things over the winter. Okay, so we also got red onions. Our red onions get stored um, in a cool, dry place away from our potatoes. These get peeled and they can be sliced nice and thin and, and used on a salad. They can also be roasted. Um, they can be thrown in soups. So we're getting into the cooler weather. A lot of, a lot of soups we're seeing on the Facebook group. So these would be great in soups as well. Chilies, salsas. Our garlic, also stored in a cool, dry place. Um, I say this every week, but garlic is great added to just about everything. So um, add it to season, you can roast it, you can um, throw it into dressings or marinades, also stored in a cool, dry place. Potatoes. So we, these are our purple Peter Wilcox potatoes. These can be roasted, they can be grilled, they can be um, sauteed. They're great for like hash browns or, or home fries. Um, you can make potato cakes out of them. Um, you can do mashed potatoes, just boil them and then mash them. Um, these generally get peeled and then um, they get stored in a cool, dry place away from our onions and our garlic. So they tend to give off moisture, so we like to keep those two groups of um, vegetables away from each other. <coughs> so we got a quart of those potatoes. All right, we also got ginger. This is our Hawaiian baby ginger, fresh ginger. Um, it does not need to be peeled, so all you need to do is scrub it, get all of the dirt off. I just use my fingernail under the water. Um, get the, the um, any excess dirt or, or um, impurities off, and then you chop it up. The stems can be used as well. So the stems tend to be fibrous, but they're good for flavoring. So I don't really like to eat them, but I chop them up and use them for, um, in like a, um, for flavoring. So in a veggie broth, in um, like a dressing or a marinade, things like that. This week's recipe will showcase our baby ginger. Um, I love this. I always think of it as like a delicacy. It's always such a short season, but such a um, awesome thing that we get. Um, this gets stored in the fridge. So put it in a plastic bag or put it in glassware, store it in the fridge. It stores for like seven to 10 days really well. If you aren't going to use it, you can chop it up and freeze it or you can freeze it whole. If you freeze it whole, then grate it um, frozen and you can use it in teas, in dressings, in marinades, um, in stir fries. Great for flavoring, just like um, garlic, this just is a different flavor, but any um, Asian dishes, you can pickle it, you can crystallize it, um, so make like a candy out of it. There's lots of recipes on our Facebook group and there's been lots of, lots of recipes that have been shared in our um, emails, our weekly emails for the ginger. And then this will be in this week's recipe. Okay, we also got fennel. So we saw fennel early on in the season um, that fennel had the fronds, so this fennel is cut down because um, it gets colder, so the fronds don't get really used at this point. Um, fennel can be eaten raw or it can be cooked. It can be roasted, it can be caramelized, um, it can be shaved really thin and used on salads. It has a licorice flavor, so um, the entire bulb can be used, so the stalks and the bulb, um, but it's a great, it's great for just flavoring different things. Um, I like to roast it, so I like to chop it up and I like to roast it and serve that as a side. Um, that's my favorite way to use fennel. Um, refer back to our Facebook group because we did have several weeks of fennel early on so uh, any of those recipes that were shared can be used for this fennel as well 
it gets stored in a plastic bag in the fridge. Um, so you can put it in just like a Ziploc bag or a Debbie Meyer green bag, but you definitely want to store it in a bag. Okay, last week we got bok choy and we got it again this week. So bok choy we want to store in a plastic bag. Um, I store it in a Debbie Meyer green bag. It just helps make it last a little bit longer. Bok choy is great, it, sorry, plastic bag in the fridge. Um, bok choy is great for stir fries. It can be sauteed with our ginger and garlic. Um, really goes really well with those two flavors. Um, these stalks take longer to cook than the leaves. So generally you wanna separate out um, each stalk, wash them really well, dry them, and then remove the stem. Chop up the stems, chop up the leaves separate, keep them in two separate um, dishes, and then when you're sauteing, your um, stalks go in first because they're thicker. Then your leaves go in. So we used ours from last week in a stir fry. It works really well with, with stir fries. Um, you can also just cook it uh, as a side. So this gets stored in the fridge. Okay, we also got escarole. Escarole gets stored in the fridge in a plastic bag. So I put it in my Debbie Meyer green bags. Escarole can be eaten raw. It typically, if you're going to eat it raw, I recommend putting it with something sweeter because it definitely is bitter. So like a, now we're into the fall, so like a pear or an apple if you're gonna do a salad. Um, maybe a little lemon juice and um, olive oil on it. Typically it's cooked. So it's often sauteed or thrown in soups. Um, it pairs really well with beans. So you can do a beans and escarole dish. You can um, do like a, a bean soup and add your escarole to it. Okay, a couple more items. We got daikon radish. Our daikon radish gets stored in the crisper drawer of the fridge. Um, this can be served raw or it can be cooked. You can slice it thin and throw it on salads. You can grate it and throw it on salads or on top of dishes. Um, you can pickle it. You can also roast it. You can grill it. So you can slice it nice and long into long strips and grill it. Um, or you can roast it. I typically roast these, but I met a couple in the um, parking lot today that were super excited about getting daikons in our shares this week and I asked him how he used it and he said all we do is simply slice it up um, sprinkle some sea salt on it and eat it as a snack along with a glass of wine so if anyone wants to try that just simply as a snack sprinkle some sea salt on get, get it nice and clean slice it thin sea salt and that's how they enjoy it and they were so excited to have it in their shares this week so try that this gets stored in the crisper drawer um, when I roast it, so I chop them up into cubes, throw it on the sheet pan, um, and throw it in the oven and roast it. Um, some seasoning on it. I'll either do fresh garlic or garlic powder, onion powder, um, and do it that way. Definitely can be eaten raw, though, as well, so you don't have to cook it. So that's our daikon. We also have arugula. So we've seen arugula before. Um, arugula gets stored in the fridge in plastic bag on washed. Do not wash it until you're ready to use it. Um, there's been a couple posts about our arugula from the farm. It's wonderful. It's super tasty. Um, I typically eat, eat it as a salad and I keep it really simple. So I just dress the arugula and maybe throw some Parmesan cheese or freshly grated Parmesan cheese or something like that on it. Um, I just like the flavor of the arugula itself to just stand out. So I don't like to put a lot of other items with it. Um, I know that some other people are doing some other things with it, but it's, it's really yummy, just plain, um, left uncooked. You can cook it. So you can throw it into pasta dishes. You can throw it into, um, like a pasta dish it would go really well with, um, if you're doing that, you make your pasta dish and then at the very end, you throw your leaves of arugula in and let it wilt and serve it like that. It also can be turned into a pesto or a chimichurri. 
So if you aren't loving the peppery flavor of arugula, then try maybe a pesto recipe or a chimichurri recipe um, that has some other ingredients that you can use. So arugula gets start stored, excuse me, in the fridge, in the crisper drawer, if you have room. So we also got celery this week and our celery, at least mine, is really big. Um, so ideally you wanna keep it whole and you wanna store it in um, a plastic bag. If it doesn't fit in a plastic bag you have, then wrap it in plastic wrap or um, you gotta keep the moisture in. The celery from the farm tastes completely different than what you would normally get at the grocery store. So it's it's a nice treat. And the entire plant that we're getting is edible. So you don't wanna throw away the leaves. Um, we're so used to just using the stalks of the celery um, that we tend to throw the leaves away. They're usually wilted and gross. Um, this entire thing you can use. And celery's really, really good for soups. So we're hitting soup season. Um, it's really good for stuffing. So if you're not going to use it right now, you can clean it up, you can remove the leaves, store them separately, go ahead and freeze them, chop up the um, bottom stalks and freeze that separately. And that all can be used frozen in like a stuffing. It works really well. It also can be tossed into a soup frozen. Um, it is delicious raw. So you can serve, you can do like a celery salad and include the leaves. You can use the entire thing and make a nice celery salad, maybe with some onion and garlic in it. Um, it would be fresh. And then if you're not going to use it, probably within the next week, week and a half, then that's when you're going to wanna um, definitely preserve it. So that gets stored in the fridge. If it doesn't fit, then I recommend taking, like if you're not fitting it because it's too big, I recommend take, taking those top leaves off, um, storing those separately, and then um, keeping the stalks in a separate bag as well, just because it's so long. Okay, we also got a squash. So this squash, squash is a butterkin squash. It's the cross between a pumpkin, um, a pie pumpkin, and a butternut squash. So you can, it gets stored in a cool, dry place. It actually gets sweeter as it's stored. So it's totally fine to store. This is probably one of the last items you wanna work with in terms of what we got this week. Um, you can slice it in half, remove the seeds and roast it just like we do all the other squashes. You can slice it into rounds or into like wedges and roast it that way. Or you can slice it into cubes. I tend to like to cube this one um, just because it saves me work afterwards. Um, I slice it in a half, I remove the seeds, I peel it, and then I cube it and roast it. Once it's roasted, you can serve it just like that as a side, or you can puree it. And if you puree, puree it um, and don't use all of that puree, it can be frozen as a puree. So that's a really good way to preserve it. This um, can be used in place of pumpkin. So if you have like your favorite pumpkin bread recipe or pumpkin muffins, this is what you can use instead of it. Um, also probably the, I haven't tried it, but the pancake recipe that was posted, you could probably definitely use this puree. Would be a slightly different flavor, but same basic idea. So you could use this puree instead of the I think it was the coconut squash that we used for that. So I think that is it in terms of what we have this week. If there's any questions on things that you aren't sure of, um, how to use them, how to store them, remember to focus on what do you still have left from last week. Use that up, get that on the menu, and then focus on some of the ingredients from this week, um, preferably our greens, like our arugula, um, our celery, I'm trying to see what else. The bok choy, if you have it in, I just used our bok choy from last week, so I had it in a Debbie Meyer green bag and it lasted all week and was perfectly fine. Um, so 
depending on what your storage is, a lot of this will last all week long. So just slowly pick at it and, and get it up on the menu. All right, if you have any trouble, an abundance of something that you aren't sure what to use or how to preserve it or um, what to do with it, please let us know. Remember, we have three additional weeks, so three more weeks after this week that the share will, the CSA shares will continue and stay tuned for information about renewing your CSA shares. Starting this Friday, um, the information will come out this Friday, the renewal will start next Friday. So make a note on your calendar for that. All right, thanks, bye.